Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm starting my solo playthrough of Bonfire. My dear patrons voted for this on my channel what to play next. It was really a very fun exercise actually because it was a very close call between Paleo and Bonfire in the end. A die roll, yes you heard me right, a die roll decided um, that Bonfire would be my next playthrough. Very interesting and was an exclusive video for my patrons too. So really do appreciate all your support guys. But I think let's get started. So here's pretty much the setup for the solo game, which is not different or not too different from a standard um, two player game actually. Of course, we will only see one ship because I'm the only one who's actually sailing around between those islands here. We both have our player boards, but Tom, who is the solo player here, I think that's the abbreviation for automatic player, so the, the Tom in automatic, and you know, really, really nicely done, um, basically only has those four, uh, what are those called actually? I keep forgetting those little dudes. Novices, of course, those are novices. He only has four of those. We have a lot more of those. Uh, Tom also starts with one of those guardians. And those are the cards for the so-called, let's call it AI. Apart from that, he's really not caring about too much what's going on in respect to resources. We will still use or we'll take some of those um, portals here, for example. We will take the pass. But in respect to any resources, he really doesn't care about those. Again, apart from that, everything else is a standard two-player kind of setup. So I have my player board here. I'm always the starting player, which is why I have this extension here to my board. So whenever the game is over, then I will take over these tiles here. But it's also not unlikely that Tom is ending the game prematurely. Bear with me, I never played this game solo before. I played it multiplayer and really enjoyed it a big deal but I've never really actually tried out the solo mode. So I'm learning this with you as we go. But again, we basically had to make our choice in respect to which of those tiles we would start the game with. In the end, uh, it was either this one here or the one that's here in the middle. And in the end, I decided to go with the tile I had because I can move around with it. I can manipulate the bonfire. I could go for a path the overall. I'm pretty happy with the resources, or basically action tiles, I will start the game with. As usual, I will explain all the rules as I go, because I'm really not a big fan of listening to rules up front, at least in a video kind of format, as you might know. And so I think, again, I will explain you everything as I go. I believe there is really not a whole lot of differences to the two or three player game. Some of those things simply are here because it's a two player game. So in a three to four player game, we would have more of those um, tasks here on those islands. For example, there is also a slight adjustment in respect to those portal tiles here. They have to be different in each of those. So they cannot be the same types of thing in one of those bonfire space and I really hope I catched I caught this correctly uh, but I think I should be good anyway and then last thing to mention are those gnomes here you also remove some of those in a solo game I think the ones with a gold resource we are not using in this game but that's that again I will explain you everything as I go but as a very quick overview, let's look at those actions. So first of all, you can basically decide if you want to get more of those action tiles. Unfortunately, you're only allowed if you're down to one or less of those yeah, action tokens here. Right now we have five of those, so we are not allowed to take that. There is a gnome that allows you to ignore this kind of um, restriction, but in the start of the game, that's not the case. Then there is a whole list of actions that you can take. And at last but not least, um, there is also something that you can basically fulfill or complete um, those, what are those called? I think these are the tasks, right? Yeah, simple tasks. That's an action on its own. And then there are also some bonus actions going for those, I think, general novices or how do they call neutral novices. So whenever you're able to fulfill one of those, uh, I think, neutral kind of common tasks, then you are also allowed to send one of those neutral novices to the high council and get the bonus respectively. But again, that's something that <laughs> might happen a little bit later in the game. Definitely not in the first number or couple of rounds for sure. 
Speaking about rounds, this one also follows, uh, let's say, the tradition of very recent games. And again, I keep mentioning those in those videos. There are no real rounds. The game simply goes back and forth until the end game is being triggered. And again, I really like that a lot because it really helps um, keeping the flow upright. It's really, really nicely and cleverly done. I'm, it's, it's a trend, but I really like this trend, not really going into any cleanup kind of stuff. No, you take your turn, do your stuff, then it's over to the next player, back and forth, and then at some point in time, the game is over. Really like that a lot. But now I really rambled for quite some time now. Let's really dive into the actual gameplay. And the action that you are allowed to take are dictated by those action tokens here. Again, two of those you start the game with, those are wild, so you can basically do any action with those. You can always expend two any um, tokens to do one action of your free. Basically treat those two like uh, would be a wild card here, for example. Don't, don't need to be the same tokens, that's perfectly fine. Those two can, for example, replace um, this color here. But usually really try to make the best use out of your tiles because you can also score some points for those tiles that you haven't used at the end of the game. Each of those is worth three points if you haven't used them. As, as soon as you place them here on your center board, they count as being used. And then, yeah, you don't score any points for those. So right now we really want to make sure we are using those tiles here correctly. And I believe having the bonfire early as your very first action is usually not a bad thing, especially as I really don't know what Tom is about to do. So I guess for our first action, we will go for a bonfire action. And that's the symbol for the bonfire, or it's rather called the great bonfire. The thing about this bonfire is if we basically spend one of those tokens here. In, under normal circumstances, with this one token, you would be allowed to move this bonfire basically one space to in the clockwise direction. For two, you can do two steps, and for three, you can place it wherever you want it to be. The cool thing about being the very first one to deal with a great bonfire is you can also treat it like you would have spent three of those. So I can really now start wherever I want. And there is one particular action space which seems kind of interesting. And that's this one here right next to our starting space. Keep in mind the very first player who's going there can turn it wherever he wants it to be. And now we can or we have to make a choice which of those three options we are going to take. We can get two out of three. First of all, we can go for this resource here. That's a shell. So if we want, we can go for a shell. We can go for a wildcard action token, which again is not a bad thing. And we can go for one of those portals here. There was a reason I really chose this space here because I definitely do want to go for this um, portal token here. And I explain you in a second what this means. But first of all, we are grabbing this portal token. I will put it next to my player token. And then it's basically between those two things. I cannot go for these, this, these things here twice, for example. That's not allowed. But I guess for resources, I'm not so sure what I need right now. But getting another of those um, wildcard action tokens can be pretty powerful, actually. So I think Think. Let's go for it too. So first of all, we will place our wildcard token here. That's really powerful. We have now three of those wildcard actions and we still have two actions, which I also, I think I really quite like that. But we still haven't dealt with our portal token here. And this is where I, I think I need to zoom out just a little bit to show you my player board a little bit in more detail. You see those strange markings here. Those are all different kind of portals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven kind of portal tokens that you need to basically gather or can gather throughout the game. And the thing is, you have to start filling those portals from left, re <laughs> right to left. In this case, I needed to go for the rightmost portal token. That's the one here. And that was the reason why I chose this action space here. Later on, when I managed to basically get a bonfire here too, I can also score some points. I can move my guardian down there. So a lot of things how you can achieve uh, points. It's a Stefan Feldgen after all. 
um, but that was pretty much my very first action. The portal tokens are not getting refreshed, so it's over to Tomo. That was already our very first turn, so let's see what he will do. Okay, that's basically one of his cards. So you see this little um, yeah, line up there, which simply means he's not going to go for one of those gnome cards because usually those gnome cards determine for which kind of resources he's going for. He would draw one randomly and then we would resolve the action here accordingly. In this case, yeah, Tom will also simply go for a portal in this case. So I'm actually quite happy I really did use the bonfire action for my first action because then I was really free to choose. Later on I will have to spend those portal tokens anyway but again for the very first thing getting two pretty cool let's say components here is okay. So we are moving this thing further clockwise until we reach a portal space which Tom might be able to use. Uh, the player boards are all a little bit differently, keep that in mind. So he will have to start with this portal token here which he will simply grab and attach it here accordingly. And that was already the turn of Tom's Oh, that was already Tom's turn, sorry for that. And by the way, um, the game will end prematurely. I believe I mentioned that if Tom is going uh, basically the fourth full time through his deck. So there's really not a hell of a lot of action. And then we are tallying up our score. So this is definitely something I need to keep in mind. But for now, yeah, I think, oh, I think we can leave it here. We, we don't really need the space for Tom here. Back to us. And I believe I may have found the perfect task tile for us. So I think let's go with the shipping action. And similar to the Great Bonfire, the very first time you're moving your ship, you can basically use this token to sail to wherever you want it to be. Later on, you basically can jump from island to island, but each step costs you one of those. So if you're spending one, you can move from here to here, for example. If you're spending two of those tokens, you can spend one, two, or move two spaces to another island. And if you're spending three of those, you can then basically teleport everywhere. But in this case, again, it's my first shipment action, so I'm spending this tile. And here's really the perfect, perfect task for us. So I think I really want to go here. Yeah, absolutely. So we are teleporting over here. And there is another, let's say, very special situation for the shipping action because it allows you to take a bonus action right off the bat. One of those bonus actions is to claim an offer tile here. But of course, you still need to spend or pay for that action, which in this case isn't really a problem. So first of all, we will have to spend another action. Um, I don't have the offering action, which would normally be this one here, by the way, but I can use one of my wild cards. I gained one after all. So I've now initiated basically a bonus action as part of my sailing or whatever kind of action we are taking here. In order to now claim basically this offering tile, and this offer tile pretty much tells you having an or this task here this task tells you have a offering tile on an island that shows this resort and look at here this is exactly the island where it needs to be so we can basically fulfill this task here right off the bat but it's only worth two points but i will still take it we can make more points out of those two so we have spend this and again now to claim this or place my offering tile here i have to look at the resource of this island so i have to spend one of those shells not a problem i start the game with all six resources including gold and gold is also a wild card resource here and on top of this i also have to spend or place one of my two offer tiles here that are currently visible in order to do so i have to pay for the resource here too and who i'm not 100 percent sure what to go for i think hmm, yeah let's simply go for this for these herbs here i believe i think so so we have to spend the resource that's printed on my offering tile here too so overall i had to spend two resources one for the island and one for the offer tile then we take it we flip it to the other side of course we are grabbing the task tile here 
and this pretty much tells you okay we have claimed this tile and this now really counts for this so we have to have an offering tile that's a symbol for the offer tile which is on an island that chose this resource and yeah guess what that's what it is last thing to do as part of this action is to place this task on one of those spaces here and ideally you want to match it to the color of the path tile here that's a white yellowish kind of tile that on the other hand will be a blue bonfire here so in this case we know that those two doesn't do don't match so in this case let's place this task here and maybe if i'm lucky enough i grab one path tile here which will then basically map match this one and that's what i'm about to do but okay that's the end of our action we spend a lot of our resources but that's standard thing to do we have to reveal the next offer tile here and that's also herbs are you kidding me but okay that's what it is and getting resources in this game is not really easy of course you can do that through the great bonfire for example or when you have your guardians walk along your path here but apart from that it's really not that easy getting your resources back but that was already the end of our action keep in mind we cannot fulfill the task right now because that's really a dedicated action we have to take but i guess i will take it in a minute anyway but for now let's see what tom is doing okay that's one of those cards where he's really asking for um basically a gnome card so we'll take the topmost card from the deck we will reveal it and this shows the fruit icon here and the card itself says he takes all the path car path tiles that are currently on the display that shows this resource luckily for us there is currently only one of those path tiles that shows the symbol here so we he will grab it and he will immediately place it next to his existing path here and unlike the um, portals you are filling the path from left to right that you see here but right now those things are not connected you are still looking for those portals in order to make the most out of those again lucky we were kind of lucky so this card gets discarded if you're really burning through the deck of gnomes then we will simply reshuffle those so they are not lost for good but that was already his second action of course we are refilling here as needed so this is a red path right now and there are th only three colors for those so we have the yellow and whitish ones we have the reds and the blue ones keep in mind we want the blue one because of the bonfire or the task we have just taken so i guess before before we do anything crazy i really want to make sure we are getting this one here in order as a normal player we're not just flipping cards we really have to work for our tiles and resources here we have to spend the appropriate action token here too which is this greenish one here the very first i think three ones that you take you can basically take for one of those tokens as of the fourth path tile you have to spend two of those right now that's our first one so that's totally fine fine so we oops we are grabbing this portal here let's simply replace it right away that's a red one so we are kind of lucky so let's say he would go there again and there are two cards of these in in this deck so he could have gone for this resource here too so i think this was definitely a wise choice so we are placing our pathway now next to ours and now you see this in theory will map so if we are fulfilling this task which we will do in a minute actually or in our next turn then these colors match we still need the portal here at some point time to make really maximum use out of this in order to move our guardian down there but at least we have already started to make some meaningful decisions here and maybe Speaking about some of the victory points, maybe I really should walk you through at least a little bit. First of all, we will score the points that I printed here on those bonfires. Of course, we have to yeah, enlighten or whatever, have activated those bonfires before. Right now, that's not worth two points. Right now, it's nothing, but we want to place it to the other side. Then, if we manage to move our guardian later on to a bonfire that has been lightened, then we would also score the little points that are printed here. Very small. So if we move our guardian later on here, this would be worth three more points, for example. Then we would score um, basically two points for each portals that are adjacent to a bonfire. So again, 
again, let's say we will activate this bonfire here. We will place um, a portal here. That's another two points for this example here. On top of that, we will give two points for each of your path tiles showing a crystal of the same color as the adjacent bonfire. So this is already sufficient here too. So if we activate it, then basically it's the same thing. We get also two more points for that. Then we will score four points for those common tasks here. Or here we could even score seven points if we will be able to activate all seven of our bonfires. I personally didn't manage to do that, but I'm pretty sure it's possible if you play it better than I do, which there are a lot of you folks, which I'm sure you will play this game more efficiently than I would do. Additionally, we will also score three points for each of those fatals that are still left at the end of the game. And then we also get one point for every two resources and or of those action tiles. So that's a point, that's a point, that's a point, but the same is true, that's a point. So basically you count all these together divide them by two and that's the amount of bonus points that you will get there is still let's say some more points that you could go for these um, end of game tokens here but again don't really rely on those they can give you some points but really not that many and of course you may also score some points from those elders here and there are also some points which you gain from those tasks here in the high council, but that's only usually one point. So again, also some, those are in-game points. And those are, I believe, the only real in-game points that you get. But again, the majority of your points will be done through your bonfires, through your tasks, through the portals that are next to those and what not. Okay, moving back to Tom. And I must really say, I like how easy those AI cards are being to um, understand, to trigger. It's really, you don't really have to think this through, have to whatever think for another player. The card clearly tells you what needs to be done in a very simple way. And I like this a lot. Okay, that's another one where we have to flip over one of those gnomes. So we are getting this, um, I don't know, flowery kind of thing and for this action he will basically go for a task on an island that shows this resource here and he will go for the lowest scoring task but he will activate it right off the bat so let's have a look at those so it was this resource here so we take it from either of those two islands here i believe this is yeah that's the lowest scoring task that is available so we will go for it and that's easy one actually i really like that he will place it face up or face down now in this case on top of the left most available thing here then he will take one of his um yeah novices here who he will send to the high council here and that's the second end game trigger if there are in a basically one to two player game seven of those novices here we will basically trigger the end of the game so this is the first of seven of those he will place it on any one of those doesn't really matter he's not taking it away from us in any way but he will not go there again so basically each of those can only hold a novice of one color so neutral one could go there i could still go there and then this would be completely blocked and in this case it's also very very simple all of those spaces give you access to really a very cool special ability a very cool thing that you can do a bonus or they can give you one point that's the easy one or the easy thing for tom to do he will simply score one point and yeah he's running away with the game already but that was already his action very quick very nice very precise like that a lot then it's back to us and i believe hmm, i want to simply complete my task keep in mind we have our offering tile on an island that shows this resource so we have basically fulfilled this so we have just scored two points but again we will score those points at the end of the game we will also score two more points because this bonfire matches the color of this pathway here nicely done so that's four points in total and because we have activated we are taking our novice now and we are allowed to place him into the kai council wherever we would like him to be problem is so many choices this one is a cool one because you get two gold which are wild cards and also a wild card action that's very very powerful this one is cool too because we get a gnome and getting those gnomes early in the game is also usually not a bad idea and i think that's what i'm going to do so i will place my novice 
into this seat here. I believe he goes in here. That's his seat. So there is a space for all of those. And again, now I can go for a victory point. <laughs> Lame, of course. No, this one tells me I'm allowed to take one of those um, basically specialists that are available. And those guys are down here. And this one is, I think, exceptionally tasty, actually. Ah, this one is pretty cool because whenever we are placing another of our novices into the High Council later on, we get an extra gold resource. And again, gold is a wild. On the other hand, this here is also cool because whenever we are placing a path tile, we gain the resources that's depicted on that. Question is, how often are we going to do that? Both of those are really extremely powerful, but really getting gold, I think, is could be the better deal. So let's go for this gnome here. We will place it next to our player board. I will show that to you in a second. We will replenish this right off the bat. Uh, I don't know this one here, but I'm pretty sure I know what this means. You may place fate hearts or they protrude beyond your fate area. This can be very nice if you really want to place something desperately, which normally wouldn't fit. It's okay, and getting those things early really help you defining your, let's call it, strategy at least a little bit. But that was already our action because we have simply just completed our task. And keep in mind, there are also two of seven known in the high council here so two sevens of the game is already over so it's really not that long of a game which is also something which i really quite like a lot okay moving back to tom let's see what he will do okay yet again we will have to reveal our next gnome and that's this, I think it's a root, and we already know this card here. There are two of those in the deck here too. I think I explained this to you. He will go for all of the path tile that shows this symbol. Again, kind of lucky for us. Right now, there is only one that matches this root here. Place it there. We will reveal a new one and yes, another yellow one. So again, we were kind of lucky. No other blue came out. So I think I'm still very happy with my decision going for that path relatively quickly. But again, that's already the end of his turn. Then it's back to us. And I think, hmm, might seem kind of a waste, but I think I will go for it anyway. It could backfire. It could really backfire, but I'm, I'm trying it now. So I will spend one of my wild cards here in order to move the bonfire one space further. In theory, I could also spend two and go for this right away. Maybe that could be the safer bad actually, but I don't know. No, let's not do that yet. I will go for those two rewards. Again, this could be kind of a lame problem. I cannot go for a portal because I can only take portals that match my next thing. And my next one portal would be this one here. And this is here. That's why I'm thinking maybe I should spend two in order to make it here. But let's try something different. Why not? So we will go for this bonfire action token. Again, getting action tokens is never a bad thing. And we will also score two points just because we can. And again, this is not that high scoring of a game. Yeah, there is this 50 marker here, but that's about it. So it's not really, a, I don't know, um, Russian Railroad or so where you score seven thousand points no i think a couple of hundred points or so so really two points is not bad in this game so you should really nothing to sneeze at really nothing to sneeze at but that was already my action yeah let's move back to tom don't let it be the portal action don't let it. it's the portal action of course it's the portal action i hate you so much okay very quickly um he needs this one here so he will move it next there. And I think, okay, no, maybe that's not too bad, actually. Maybe that's really not that bad because the next tile he needs is actually here. And from here, I could go to this one here. So I think that's okay. So we will move it one, two, three spaces. So just like he would have spent three of those bonfire tokens. But again, he doesn't have any resources. So he will grab this tile here accordingly. He will place it next to his player board. I will simply do that off camera. And I believe that's pretty okay for us because we can stay here where we are. So we will definitely go for our next bonfire action here. We will flip it once more. We will go for this, I don't know, glasses. I have some other thoughts, but I'm not 
telling you what I think it might be. And then we could go for another resource. We still have this route or we could go for this another action. And with this action, I think we can still do something with that. So I think, yeah, let's go for this action token here instead. I believe that's okay. Really, it really is. Then we are moving back to Tom. Let's reveal his next card. That's another one where he's not um, spending or ex uh, showing us one of the extra gnomes. And that's a very simple one. He will simply go for one guardian that he doesn't already have. Doesn't really matter too much. We will simply go for this, yeah, I don't know, light brownish kind of guardian. We will place it here and that's already the end of his action. And I guess for our next action, we want to go for another task, actually. I think so. This one looks kind of tasty, but so does this one up here too. So this, but this could give us four points. Problem is we are rather far away from those um, guardians, actually. If this one would require this guy, this guy, this task asks you to have this, I don't know, cyan kind of a uh, guardian and also this uh, light brown kind of guardian in your somewhere on your player board actually so mm, it's really not that simple here this one for example it's a high scoring one but you need to have four of those tasks a yellow tasks on your display this one counts too obviously the problem is uh, he hasn't taken one but mm, it could be an easy seven points actually this one is also cool Pretty much tells you you need to have the gnome that shows this resource. Problem is right now we only have this one gnome here and which shows this resource. But maybe that's also not too terrible and three points and could give us some actual things to do. Maybe that's what we want to do. Yeah, let's do that. So we are basically spending this to move one island further along these light blue lines here. So we are on this island here. So we have taken care. Next we can take our bonus action. Keep in mind that's the reason why I've taken this action tile here. Then we have to spend this root. That's not a problem. We have the root. And on top of this we have to place an offering tile now. So in this case it's either the herbs or the fruit. We only have fruit so we have to give away this tile here. We will flip it to the other side. We have to spend the fruits. Nicely done. Where is the cup? So we will take this tile here. We will place it next here. These resources and action tiles have been used too. And last but not least, we are grabbing our task and we will place it somewhere onto our player board. We know for sure that the next most likely are not the right um, tiles we need. So I could gamble now and really wait, for example, or, or basically hope that the next one is revealed is the right one. But I think in this case, let's place it here. So we can place something else here and then we can still go for a blue path tile there. Again, keep in mind, you get bonus points if you have matching colors uh, between bonfire or activated bonfire and your path tiles here. So I think, yeah, let's keep it here for now. Mm, I think so. Of course, we still have to reveal our next offering, which is a shell, uh, which we don't have anyway. No, but that was our action already. So let's move back to Tom. And again, we are flipping one. Now he's taking the highest tile. So he's getting basically the tasks from this highland who has the highest benefit for him. Yeah, that's the case. So that's a fruity one. So it's either up here the five pointer or it's here the four pointer. No, it's the five pointer up here. So yet again, we will simply flip it to the other side. So he will score those five points at the end of the game for sure. But for now, let's place this tile here and we will get rid of this card. And then it's again back to us. As we don't have any more of those action tiles here, I really have to go now for the very first option of my action phase, which is to grab one of those fate tiles. It's either the topmost or the bottommost tiles here. And ooh, I have to really think about this now for a second. So here I could go for some path tiles. We could gain two path tiles, which is really not bad. We could gain an offer tile and a ship tile. I think we might want to go for this one now. Hmm. Do we? Do we actually? Yeah, I 
think so we should but on the other hand here we could get a gnome that's also not too terrible but we don't get any path tiles i don't need path tiles right now because the gnome is cool too actually ah that's tough this is really so tough guys this this thing alone here i think let's go for the path tile no let's let's go for it and now we have to puzzle it down here as we see fit we could place it here we could place it here of course it has to be adjacent you cannot protrude there is a gnome that allows you to do that keep that in mind if we somehow place it over here we could also gain um this this bonus that's printed underneath so in this case i think do we now want to have two of those path tiles or do we want to have two of those uh sailing tiles and simply go for the golden resource i think that's what we are going to do i think so yeah let's do that so first of all we covered this one here so we get a gold that's nice and then we basically get first of all all the tiles that are printed on this here edge tile so we get a path and we get an offering tile for that one and one and because we have now extended this surface here this area we get two of those ship tiles which yeah i think ultimately can help us later on throughout the game but we also have lost four points but we uh three points but we have scored some gold here i think really having gold is usually not the worst thing in the world but that was already our action so we are moving into the last action of this cycle for tom and that's pretty much this one here so we will take the next of these gnome cards here so again it's the fruity one and this one is pretty easy too we will take all of the specialists of the gnomes that are on the current display that shows the same resource again we are I would say kind of lucky because there's only one gnome here he will take it he will never use the special abilities but keep in mind he will claim the common tasks whenever he is able to do that so in this case for example if he will manage to get six of those special ends and or elders he will then score four points at the end of the game and he will also place the specialist somewhere scoring yet another point and taking it away from us i think that's the crucial part about that but let's not forget to refill the offering maybe something cool is coming out okay yeah this one basically gives you a bonus um, when you're moving um, a guardian onto those pathway tiles you basically get this resource here double which is then double the amount of gold which can be pretty powerful actually depending a little bit on the timing so this goes back to the reserve again we might need to reshuffle those at some point in time and that was kind of uh, the very first round so we went through this stack here at least once we will do that maybe three more times let's see about that how soon or how many of those novices we will be able to place onto the board but i think for today i will end my playthrough here and now um I would really highly appreciate if you could somehow confirm my decision here or if this is something which I really should have done differently. I think I can still take it back. Not, no harm was done in this case. So if you really think I should have gone for this or placed these differently, please, please, please let me know. I have never played against Tom and again, I would not consider myself a very experienced player of Bonfire yet. Again, I like this game a lot, but I haven't played it that many times. So really would appreciate your comments, your suggestions on what to do next here. Anyway, I really hope you have enjoyed my first episode of Bonfire here. Um, huge shout out to all of my patrons out there. Really, really do appreciate all your support. If you want to support my channel, you will find a link to Patreon in the description of this video. You can support me directly here on YouTube by joining my community like and subscribe as usual everything helps hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and yeah until then bye bye